Hey guys, it's Will here, and tonight I'm back with another painting tutorial. Now, it feels like it's been way too long since I've done one of these, but hopefully um, I'm now in a place where I should hopefully be able to shoot a few more of them, and uh, yeah, hope you guys enjoy them. So tonight I'm doing this, Dark Eldar Venom, and the colour scheme that I'm using here is this dark blue scheme with black trim and sort of very light, almost ice blue, decals, um, not that they're decals, they're not stuck on, but they, they look like it, that's the aim anyway. Um, and this I call the Cabal of the Frozen Shard, which is the Dark Eldar army I've been working on for the Tale of Four Gamers. So uh, this is the uh, what the finished one is going to look like. Um, basically what I've done here is um, used layering to uh, build up the contrast on some of the contoured areas and then done edge highlighting to finish it off. Um, anyway, without further ado, I'm going to move this finished one to the side and then bring in a fresh one to paint. Now, as you can see, I've left the gunner off at this stage. Um, she'll be attached later. And I have also left the canopy off because I'm going to paint that separately. So starting off, I'm going to give this a nice solid base coat and the colour for this is going to be GW's Cantor Blue, uh, one of the base paints so it gives uh, nice good coverage over black. You want to add a little bit of water to it so it's not too thick and then just apply it over the whole of the, uh, the chassis of the vehicle. Um, hang on, the light's getting a bit bad there, there we go. Now as you can see, because I'm applying this over black, it's uh, not giving perfect coverage just yet, despite being a base paint. And that is uh, perfectly fine. I expect to have to do two layers of this to get a nice even coat. So it doesn't really matter at this stage if it goes on bits that you aren't intending to be blue, because once you finish this, um, finish this blue bit we can start thinking about some of the other details so you're just going to paint over anything that goes off there so you're just aiming to build up a nice even coat of this base paint so I'm going to uh, finish this up off camera because that's going to allow me to turn the model around and get the more fiddly bits but then once that's done I'll be back to show you the next step now that we've got two layers of our Cantor Blue nicely um, applied here and dry, it's time for the next colour which is going to be Lead Belcher. So this is another one of the Citadel bases and because it's a metallic you need to give it a really good shake to mix it properly. Um, and we're going to be applying this over all the parts of the model that we want to be metal. So um, the first obvious things are going to be these like engine vents here. And you want to make sure you get a, a little bit of water on this so it flows nicely. And uh, just make sure it goes into all the cracks, including inside the engine vents themselves. Um, also this uh, sort of grating here where the, uh, where the crew stand. That can be metallic. Um, and then on the underside of the model here, we've got all this uh, sort of ribbed, grilled part here. That can all... Uh, or get metallic as well. Um, you will have possibly noticed when I had this the other way up that the um, I've done the crew member, the uh, the pilot, I've done the blue parts on him, basically undercoating all of the uh, the body suit. Um, again, not being too worried if I go onto other bits because they're gonna get repainted. But with this metallic part, we want to try and avoid going over any of the blue we've already done because. Uh, I want this to be quite neat because I'm going to hit this with an ink wash next. Um, so I'm going to finish this up off camera. Oh, we also need to get in the uh, the engine inlets there. So that's all going to uh, be applied with a nice even layer of lead belcher. Uh, just while I've got it here as well, I've also base coated the gunner in blue as well. Anyway, I'm going to finish up oh, and on the weapon here, certain parts of the weapon I want to be lead belcher like the barrel of the gun anyway finish those up and neaten them up off camera and then come back and do the ink wash step so that layer of lead belcher is nicely dry now so we're going to give this model an ink wash and that's going to be with drakenhof nightshade so this is a, a dark blue color which is the obvious shade for the um the hull um, the majority of the model 
but in this case I'm actually going to use it for the metallic parts as well um, and this is uh, to give them kind of a cold steel look um, it kind of uh, just sort of works with these models plus it means I don't have to flick between two washes um, wouldn't necessarily work on a lot of vehicles but on this um, these dark Eldar ones where you've got the blue hull anyway on my paint scheme the blue on the metallic parts actually does work once you've uh, given it a dry brush to highlight it as well so going all the top of the model and all the underside as well you notice I'm holding it by the front here that uh, particular piece those fins at the front is going to be done in black so uh, don't need to worry about ink washing that make sure we get it all nicely into these bits underneath not missing anything out and into these uh, these engine grills so uh, yeah as ever I'm going to finish this off off camera and then we need to give it a nice long amount of time to dry because uh, yeah these ink washes do take a little while but that's absolutely fine once the ink wash is completely dry next thing to do is give it a dry brush and for this I'll be using Necron compound um, the dry brush is going to be applied to all of the metallic parts um, and I'm doing this relatively early in the process simply because this has a habit of getting onto other bits as well so if we get that done before we do any of the layering or detail then uh, that's just going to mean that uh, it doesn't spoil any of the detail we've already done doing the metallic bits on the gun here on this uh, rear section going under all the engine vents and then on the underside as well and you see that once this is applied it doesn't look particularly blue on the areas we gave the ink wash to just enough that it has quite a cold finish to it but not so much that you look at it and think you know that's that blue metal <coughs> so just going to finish this up and then we'll come back and do start doing some of the detail on the black parts of the model so the dry brush doesn't really take any time to dry so we can move straight on to the next step and that is going to be to start filling in some of the black parts of the model. So for that I'm going to use Abaddon Black initially um, and I've added a little bit of water here just to um, keep it a nice uh, even consistency because being one of the base paints it does tend to be a bit thicker and at this stage you're starting to need to be a bit more careful just applying it to all the areas that you want to be black so the first the most obvious thing is going to be the uh, the weapons here just making sure to leave the bits metallic that you want to uh, want to keep metallic because we don't have to go back over those so I'm just painting along there around here and then you see we've got the uh, the gun on the underside as well so we'll, uh, we'll do that in black and also the um, the pilot's console in the, uh, the cockpit here and do that in black uh, I have to do the neatening up of this off camera but you get the basic idea and also the pilot's visor I'm gonna keep that black he's got this uh, sort of faceless head so we'll, uh, we'll do that black uh, the other area that's going to be black is some of the the outboard fins so like here this section here and on the, the front here so with this it's just a case of picking a couple of panels um, ideally symmetrically with something like this with some, if this was like an orc vehicle and you're picking out different panels you'd want them to be asymmetrical to give that sort of more random look that orcs have but dark elder although they're you know quite a, um, a chaotic race in how they live their lives their vehicle design tends to be a bit more ordered so We'd keep it symmetrical so we do the rear fin on both sides and the um, the nose fins on both sides so I'm going to do those in black making sure to get in all the nooks and crannies here this is going to be the, the base color for all of these so once all that's done we can move on to highlighting these areas highlighting black can sometimes be a little bit tricky particularly when there's a lot of detail such as on the uh, the gun here um, because if you use um, a 
fairly dark grey, you'll get quite a subtle result, but it might not actually look too much like a highlight, it'll just look like a, a grey area that's been shaded black. Um, and if you use a light colour, what can happen is it looks too light um, and uh, doesn't just doesn't, doesn't look natural, it's too stark. Um, and what I find the best way to combat this is rather than performing a, an edge highlight like I would normally do, use a dry brush instead. And it's going to be a very light dry brush of this colour here, Dawnstone, which is quite a, a light grey really compared to Sun in the Range. Um, and so we're just going to brush that across here just to pick out the raised details on this weapon. And as you can see, it's giving it just a very faint highlight. If I tried to do this as an edge highlight, there's a chance that it would look too stark and uh, not, not look quite right, but uh, it's, it works well enough with this, uh, with this dry brush. So it just gives it a very, very subtle highlight. Um, and although I wouldn't normally dry brush where there's already detail work, like this metal here, um, the grey is close enough to the colour of the metal that you don't actually notice it once it's gone on. So there we go, that is that done on there. Going to do the other parts of the model. Um, at this stage, I'm not going to highlight these bits here on the fins. Going to do those slightly differently because there's less detail there. A starker highlight isn't such a problem, but we're going to do them once I've layered the main body of the model. I'm now going to turn my attention to the main hull of the model, this area that's all very dark blue at the moment that we gave an ink wash to earlier. And the effect I'm going for here is kind of a, a layered highlight effect. Um, so gradually fading from very dark in the deep recesses up to a very a much brighter colour on the, um, the raised surfaces. And a lot of people to get this kind of effect uh, might use an airbrush and you can totally do that. Obviously, if you do, there's probably people much better than me for doing tutorials on airbrushes. I don't tend to use one. It just doesn't, for me, suit my process, but it's certainly a, a valid way of doing it. But what I'm going to show you is how to do it with a layering effect instead. So the key here is that for each new layer, you don't want to apply it too thick. You want it um, to be quite a thin layer of paint, which will help to blend with the previous colour and give it more of a gradual effect rather than a, a very defined edge. So first colour we're going to use is this Cantor Blue. This is the original colour we base coated it in. And particularly with these foundation paints, it's important to add enough water that they, they flow well. And you almost want this to kind of be almost translucent. You want to see it, but you also want to get a little bit of a hint of what's underneath as well. So for this, we're going to be applying it to almost all of the model. And as you can see, I'm just stopping there as I get to... Ooh, I'll just wipe that bit, excess bit off of my finger. Just there. Now at the moment, that looks quite a stark line. But as that dries, particularly because there's a lot of water in the paint, that will look less stark and have more of a, a subtle effect, particularly if you can try and feather the edges a little bit like I'm doing here on the top bit. Um, the one place you do want to make sure it is quite a stark divide is here where you've got the, um, what's it, um, the actual cracks, I don't know what else to call them, that in the hull that you get with Eldar vehicles. You want them obviously to be very dark and the colours around them to be light, but um, other than that you want to try and, uh, and fade. So like across here, I've got this uh, area here that's going to be in shadow under there. And uh, yeah, this will take quite a while to do. And this is just going to be the first of several layers. So I'm going to carry on building this up off camera. Um, Make sure we can get around the other parts of the model, the underside, the back, etc. And then come back and show you the next layer. So to get the next layer colour, um, we're going to have to start mixing some colours up. So going with the original colour Cantor Blue, and then the colour that I'm going to use for the final highlight. 
um, we're going to gradually blend between those. So we've got Cantor Blue and Teclis Blue. Now the first mix I've done of these is two parts Cantor Blue to one part Teclis Blue um, with enough water to make it flow well. And the more um, sort of subtle transitions between the colours you do, the more layers you'll get and the smoother result you'll get, but the longer it'll take. So you've got to find the compromise that works for you. So for me, I'm going to go Cantor Blue, then I'm going to go two parts Cantor Blue to one part Teclis Blue, and then about two parts Teclis Blue to one part Cantor Blue, and then the final highlight in Teclis Blue. Um, these ratios are sort of rough. You kind of do it by eye to work out what works. So going over the model again with this, um, and just bearing in mind that it will dry slightly darker than it goes on. You're just going over the mo over the more raised parts now, leaving a good amount of the original Cantor Blue showing just to uh, build up a nice highlight here. I've gone too far over there, so I just drag my finger across to uh, lift off the excess. Um, so we've got things like these engine housings here, gradually sort of feathering the colour up, but also paying particular attention around the edges where we're eventually going to have an edge highlight. And if you go on to the black parts on these fins here, that's not too much of a problem because we can neaten that up. But um, going on to the, like the engine vents would be problematic because those have already been dry brushed and it'd be fiddly to go back and finish them off. So take extra care around there. Um, I've got this sort of nice raised part on the, the hull here. So we're going to do that. Just leave a little bit of a gap so you can see where the raised bit is. Going over the front here and just gradually building this up on all the raised parts of the model to uh, start to get our first colour transition. So now that that layer's dry you can see the gradual transition starting to form between the, the very dark recesses and the lighter colours on the raised parts and we're going to do the uh, the next highlight now so that's going to be with um, a 50 oh no air a two parts Teclis Blue to one part Cantor Blue mix um, and we're going to apply that in the same way uh, just leaving a bit of the previous colour showing so um, it's just sort of feathering it along the edges there to catch the raised sections and you may find for some of the finer details you need to switch to a smaller brush or just a brush with a better tip because I think this one is uh, starting to lose the best of its tip now I might need to uh, replace that soon you can see here it's just the uh, sort of the edges and the particularly high parts of the model along here along uh, the edge of the cockpit and just picking those out and uh, I say it looks a little bit stark at the moment but that will um, that will fade as the color gets a little bit darker as it dries so I'm going to finish that up off camera, but I just want to show you the uh, underside of the model here. You can see I've been highlighting as well, but I've been trying to keep it a little bit darker. So the uh, um, I've been using less of the highlight colours to try and sort of show that the underside of the model is that a little bit darker because it is obviously going to be in shadow from the rest of the vehicle. Anyway, I'm going to uh, neaten this all up, finish off that highlight and... Uh, then we're going to come back and do the edging. So the final colour for the um, the hull of the vehicle is going to be pure techless blue and this is going to be applied as an edge highlight. So you want a, a brush with a good tip for this. It doesn't necessarily have to be a small brush as long as it's got a good tip. And you're just um, applying that along all the sharp edges of the model to uh, really sort of pick them out. Um, and this does take a little while to do, so it's probably worth, you know, um, getting something to listen to, you know, a, a review of a new codex, perhaps, or, uh, you know, uh, some good music, something like that. Something to listen to, I do, because it will take a little while to do. And you're just tracing around all the, um, all the sharp edges of the model. So like along the corner of the, uh, the cockpit here. And this is slightly tricky to do on camera 
because it's worth pulling the model a little bit closer to you so you can steady yourself but uh, yeah here we go you can see it's starting to uh, sort of be a, a nice highlight for that so it's going to take me a little while to do it all so I'm going to as always finish up off camera but you can start to see how that is transitioning nicely from the very dark shadows right up to the bright edges and although if you look closely you can particularly under this harsh light see where the transition is it's nice and uh, nice and subtle even then which is the look we're looking for and there we have it the main hull of the vehicle is now complete and we've got this nice uh, sort of uh, graduated highlight effect and uh, it's looking pretty good so what we're going to do now is work on some of the details of the model um, so the main thing is going to be the crew but before we tackle them I'm just going to have a look at the uh, the weapon now you can see here we've got the uh, the metallic part and the main body of the weapon done but I just want to do this sort of inner bit in the workings of it now there's no right or wrong way to do this per se but uh, what I want to do is give it a very cold look like it's almost uh, firing some sort of venom that will freeze you as much as anything so uh, uh, just to fit in with the theme of my uh, my particular Dark Elder army, the Cabal of the Frozen Shard. So I've just got some um, nice cold blue here, the Fang, which is sort of a, a dark cold blue grey. And I'm just going to put that into all of that recess there. There we go. And that's going to be the base colour for what I'm going to do here. And then I'm going to flip it around, do the other side, do the weapon underneath and then we're going to give this a quick highlight. So that's base coated now and you can see this makes the weapon look a little bit more interesting um, than just the pure black and grey and silver and adds a little bit of colour while still keeping it within that cold colour palette for the whole model. Um, then to highlight this I'm going to use Rust Grey which is the sort of the natural highlight of choice for, um, for the fang. They're quite clearly designed to work together and just being very careful with a nice fine point on your brush just want to trace it down the middle just catching that raised bit in the centre there to give it a bit of highlight this is very fiddly to do on camera and uh, I've already gone slightly over there so just uh, move on that up see it's, it's very fiddly to do but um, while filming it but it goes right the centre there and just acts as a highlight for that. So I'm going to neaten that up off camera and then come back and show you what the finished result looks like. Okay so I've done that part now and it probably shows up best um, under here. I think the, the light catches it a bit too much on the top and it's not, not showing to the camera too well but under here you can kind of see you've got that thin line there acting as the highlight. Um, but that's the weapons complete now and I'm going to go and have a look at these screens inside the cockpit here. So I'm just going to bring the camera a little bit closer, focus that in. And you can see you've got these control panels on the, uh, the dashboard there. And I'm going to do these in a very dark, slightly um, closer to the blue end of the spectrum green. So the base for this is going to be Incubi Darkness. And so you just want to do all the vision screens in a nice thin coat of Incubi Darkness, being careful not to go over the edges because uh, with all this dry brushing around here it would be a real pain to try and neaten that up. So just base coating all, the, all these different control panels in Incubi Darkness. You could in theory do them in different colours, um, but just for the purposes of this I'm going to keep it all, all in one colour, but you can use... Uh, different sort of palette of colours to get sort of different types of screens but for me I'll just stick to this one basic colour. So next we're going to give this a highlight and for that I'm going to use this colour here, Cabalite Green which is showing ridiculously big on your screen right now um, and this is going to be applied over most of the screen um, just leaving the bottom left hand corner, or sorry the bottom right hand corner in the original colour. I'm going to do this on all the screens. Um, I've also been working on these ones at the back here, so they've been base coated, so now they need highlighting. These ones in sort of the, uh, the gunner's control area. 
so we're just going to do those and then let them dry uh, before we do the next highlight. Next colour up is going to be Moot Green, so a very bright green we're on to now. And this is going to be applied really just over the, the top left hand, or the top and left hand side of it. Uh, not quite just down the edge, because uh, we have got one more highlight to come, but a much smaller amount than we've been using on the previous highlights. And then to finish the screens off, we're just going to use a little bit of white scar just to give a very fine highlight on the top left hand corner. Just to, And then a tiny little dot down the bottom in the same way as you would paint like a, a gemstone on an Eldar vehicle. And you can see now all these weapon panels now have that nice faded glow effect on them. And I've also done that around the back on the, the control panels that the gunner will use. Um, now there's just a couple more things left to finish up the main body of the model. First one is going to be just highlighting these black areas. Now whereas on the, the gun and the, the fine details um, I used a dry brush because um, a, uh, an edge highlight would have looked slightly too stark. On these larger areas you can get away with an edge highlight and for that I'm going to be using this colour here, Dawnstone, the same colour as we used before. But rather than a dry brush we're going to be doing an edge highlight so we're just bringing it down the edges like that just to give it a nice sort of crisp edge highlight where the where the light catches the edge and you want to do it for these uh, like indentations in the uh, like the uh, the wings i guess you'd call them so i'll do those both sides and all this needs is a brush with a good point and a steady hand. And we just do that over all of these panels. And with that highlight done, um, the vehicle is basically complete apart from the crew. Um, and you could just finish up the crew and leave it there. But what I want to do to make them stand out a bit more is add some freehand free hand markings. So if I just pull in this Venom, which is one of the existing ones from my army, you can see I've got these patterns on here and something different on the other side. And um, you could achieve a similar effect with various Dark Eldar and um, Dark Elf transfer sheets. But I quite like to do the freehand myself and I think as um, armies go Dark Eldar are one of the easier armies to do the freehand for because it tends to be um, very simple abstract patterns usually in a single colour so it's a, it's a good place to start if you've not freehanded before because uh, it, you can't really make it look wrong as long as you uh, keep it neat so like I say it's basic so sort of simple um, sort of harsh lined abstract patterns and you can get some of the ideas from this in the Dark Eldar Codex or just by searching images of Dark Eldar vehicles online. So uh, always worth going to there for some inspiration first. But essentially what you want to do is just start drawing these sort of uh, asymmetrical jagged shapes along the side of the vehicle. So I'm going to start with um, like a fairly long triangle uh, coming down here just as kind of a starting point and um, with this I'm using Fenrisian grey which is just a, a very light blue grey that contrasts nicely with a very dark deep blue on the hull. And you're just marking out the initial shape of the shapes first. Uh, trying to keep a nice point on the brush. It's important to have a brush with a good tip. It doesn't necessarily have to be a particularly small brush. This is a Citadel medium layer because I find it holds its tip very nicely, that's why I'm using it. So there's that one. I'm going to have another triangle cutting across it, but this isn't going to just be a, a straight triangle. We're going to have a bit of a curve to it, curving up um, at one end, but still keeping the same basic sort of shapes that you see on a lot of Dark Eldar vehicles. Now obviously this is going to... Uh, hide some of the detail work you've done before with the highlighting but that's okay if anything what it's great for doing is covering up any mistakes and imperfections in the highlighting um, so if you have got something like that that needs covering up you can uh, do that and as we go through these I'm starting to uh, 
just sort of fill in the inside of the shapes as well so we can get an idea of what it's going to look like and it's important when you're doing this to keep your paint nice and thin obviously not not so thin that it starts to run but just so that it, it flows nicely and uh, that will mean that like here you don't necessarily get full coverage straight away it might look a little bit streaky but that's fine if you're keeping it to a thin coat there's no reason you can't go back and do another coat so I'm going to add a little bit more uh, detail to this add a few more shapes fill them in do the second coat and then I'll show you a little trick that just helps to make these um, stand out a bit so the basic shapes are all done now and filled in and you can see that applying that second thin coat has given it a nice um, overall finish and I've done something a little bit different on the other side same basic principle but slightly more curved to the lines um, while there's no need to be symmetrical with these what you do have to well what I like to do is at least try and work on the same panels either side even if it's with different colors so you say but both bits are on the side there but anyway to make these look just a little bit better there's a little trick I can do um, just to uh, to make them stand out a bit more so get some Cantor blue already got some of this on my palette and this is the original color we base coated it in and just where the lines cross over each other just get a little bit of Cantor blue on your brush and just draw a line there so it looks like one line is passing over the other so do a line on either side now that's not gone quite straight there I need to neaten that up but you can see now it looks like this vertical line is going above that one and do that again over here and this time I'm going to do it like this Ooh, I need a bit more paint like this and so now it looks like this curved line is going over the straight line and then we'll repeat the same sort of process where they cross over on the other side and there we go with the addition of those um, thin lines uh, separating the different pieces it now looks like the various parts of the pattern cross over each other um, and gives it a nice sort of uh, nice sort of finish I, I quite like it like I say this is an optional step but I think it looks good now to finish off the model we need to do the crew so we've got the gunner in here who you can see has just been base coated in um, uh, Cantor blue and then washed with Drakenhof nightshade the same as the vehicle but at that point I left him didn't do anything more essentially the same has been done with this girl here who is going to be the gunner um, I'm going to focus on her because there's a few more bits to do to her uh, but everything you need to do to the um, to the driver also gets done to the gunner just need to adjust my light a little bit there we go um, and basically what we want to do now um, we've done the metallics in the same way as the vehicle as well so just base coat of lead belcher wash and then a dry brush but now we want to give her um, some other colors on there so um, dark Eldar models often have a lot of um, exposed skin um, on the arms the face maybe even on the chest in this case and we've also got these little uh, bits of flayed human skin down there and for all of those I'm going to base coat them with this color here if I can find it there we go this is Talon Flesh which is an old GW foundation paint um, essentially they were the forerunners to the base coats um, there is a base coat equivalent but I'm still using this because it's the one I've still got so I just want to apply this to all the areas of the model that are going to be skin whether it's going to be elven skin or human skin um, for both we base coat in this or I base coat in this but then you can um, change this change it up slightly whether it's going to be the actual dark Eldar skin which has a lighter color than the human skin down here so I'm going to just finish those up and then show you what we're going to ink wash it with. So slight correction there before we ink wash it, um, I want to give it a second base coat on all the bits that are going to be elven skin. So for this I'm using Kislev Flesh, which is a lighter colour. It's one of the layer paints, which is why we had to do the Talon Flesh on the um, 
on all of the flesh areas first, simply because this wouldn't cover very well over the blacks and dark blues that were already on there. So, uh, yeah, just uh, applying this now onto all the bits that are going to be sort of dark elf, elven flesh, rather than uh, the human flesh that we've got down here, which we're going to leave in that talon flesh. Incidentally, for this uh, particular model, I've got a blue tacked onto an old paint pot simply because um, I shouldn't have a base and it just gives me something else to, to grip onto while I paint. So I'm just going to finish up all the elven uh, flesh parts now. So with that layer of Kislev flesh dry, you can see the, the contrast between the lighter dark Eldar skin here and the flayed human skin down here, which is going to be a bit darker. Now I'm going to ink wash these with two separate colours. So we're going to use Reichland Flesh Shade, which is the dark colour, and that's going to be used on the, the human flesh down here. There's actually quite a small amount of that on this model. Some of the Dark Eldar models have like full um, loincloths and tabards made out of it, but uh, this has just got the, uh, the little bit round her belt there. So we'll give that a nice even coat of this, let it settle into the recesses. And then we're going to use this colour here, which is Grofon Sepia, for the um, Dark Eldar skin. But um, this is obviously one of the old washes. The modern equivalent to this is uh, Seraphim Sepia, but it's, uh, it's the same colour. So just wash your brush before using this, like I've just done off camera. And uh, yeah, just apply this to all the bits that are going to be, be Dark Eldar. And you can see it gives a, a more subtle um, shading than the darker Reichland flesh shade there. Now in theory you could paint these two colours the same way, there's no reason to suggest that it you know, has to be human flesh down there, but I think it kind of makes sense, you know, sort of the humans are the most numerous race in the galaxy and uh, one that the Dark Eldar are particularly known to prey on, so why not? There we go. I'm going to leave that to dry and then we're going to start layering these up. So with the shading dry, it's time to start layering up the colours. And the first part I'm going to do is the darker human flesh down here. So to start this off, I'm going with Cadian Flesh Tone. And this is um, slightly lighter than the original Talon Flesh base, but a lot darker than, say, Kislev Flesh. So we're just going to be applying this over the vast majority of the area, just leaving the deeper recesses with the, um, the ink wash colour in there. And this is sort of like going to be the main, uh, main colour, so it's a fairly uh, healthy, slightly tanned human flesh colour. Ever so slightly tanned. Okay, then we go over all of the areas here, just leaving, like I said, the deep recesses in shadow. Then we're going to do a second highlight, this time with Kislev flesh. And here you're much more focusing on the the edges. You can see it almost looks a little bit, bit stripy and um, it's because of the, the way this appears to be folded here. So we'll try not to put too much of this on, leave the Cadian flesh tone as the, the main colour of this as the highlight. Um, and with, uh, with skin you'll often have to do more highlights to get it to look right than you would with a lot of other things because uh, it can be uh, just a uh, that just looks wrong if you highlight skin too harshly. Um, it has this much more uh, gradual tone to it. I mean, even these three layers of highlight can end up looking a little bit too stark, but uh, yeah, it's just the, uh, the nature of skin. There we go, so that's that. And then we're gonna give it one final highlight in just a second. And that final highlight is gonna be this color here, Flayed One Flesh. So this you want to brush with a really good point and not much paint on it, just going for the really sort of fine edges, just to uh, make the, the, sort of the corners of the folds really pop. There we go, so along there. Um, probably not even going to do it on those underside bits there because they're kind of slightly in shadow from the other parts anyway. And that's that part done. And the next thing to do will be to highlight her skin. 
so this is obviously going to be a much lighter tone so the colour I'm starting with here is actually going to be back to the Kislev flesh I've still got some of my palette so I can just go straight onto that um, and again much like we did for um, the, uh, the skin down here we're just applying this one as the main colour so leaving the deep recesses in the base colour or the sort of the washed colour and having this on the majority of the raised surfaces so this for the the dark Eldar skin is equivalent to what we used the Cadian flesh tone for on the uh, the previous bit and there's quite a bit more of this so I'm going to finish it up off camera but you can kind of see you know we're just leaving the deepest recesses in that dark colour and picking out all the raised areas with this then we're going back to Flayed One Flesh and apply this as a highlight over all the areas we just did in Kislev Flesh, leaving some of the, the previous Kislev Flesh showing. Now with this you cover them a bit more than you would have done even when we applied the second highlight, the Kislev Flesh, down here because um, unlike the, the loincloth which has some quite harsh folds in it, here the skin has more of a, a gentle angle to it I guess you'd say. Um, it's not such a, a harsh contrast, so we're building this up a little bit more gradually, just leaving some of the Kislev flesh showing rather than the majority of it. Uh, so we do this over the face as well. The face is always a tricky part to do, um, and I'm going a little bit off the camera there, aren't I? Um, but with practice, you can kind of get to work out where the raised areas are going to be and what's going to look good. It looks a bit starker on the camera than it actually does um, in reality. I think that's just the way the uh, the camera's recording the light. It's not as uh, stark a highlight as you're seeing through the camera lens. I'm going to finish that up off camera and then show you the next highlight. So after I'd completed that highlight, um, I decided that the contrast on the brow was too stark. So I went back and mixed up a 50-50 of Kislev Flesh and Flayed One Flesh and applied that um, across here before then re-highlighting in Flayed One Flesh and that seems to have given me a nicer sort of fade from dark to light. Um, the thing with skin and with, with any sort of layered highlight is that the more layers you do the smoother the transition is going to be but you've got to get the balance between using enough layers to uh, to get a good look uh, but not so many layers that you spend hours just painting one sort of transition. So we're going to do a final highlight now for this and this is going to be a very light colour here. I've actually mixed up uh, about 50-50 of Flayed One Flesh and White because I don't have a, a lighter colour in my collection for skin than Flayed One Flesh but I'm sure GW do one. And this is just going to be applied on the um, most raised surfaces, so like the nose here, the tip of the nose, along the brow, particularly focusing on the face because that's where a lot of the, uh, the most sort of uh, sharp features are. The musculature and the other exposed skin areas don't really tend to uh, to have these kind of things, but like the tips of the ears, the chin, just the most raised surfaces along the top of the cheekbones just to make them pop and there we go I'm going to uh, leave it at that um, once that's all dried I'm going to come back and do some of the other details like the eyes and the hair now the eyes on a 28 mil scale model are pretty tricky to paint to be honest um, but I'm going to give it a go and the technique I'm going to use is basically starting off with this colour here white scar and a nice fine brush and just applying that into um, the actual uh, sort of the eye socket trying to just get it where the white of the eye would be now some people don't really uh, think this gives a great result um, it is uh, certainly tricky to get right, but you can see there where the whites of the eyes are now. Um, what some people actually do for eyes on models of this scale um, is leave them in the shadow of the brow so they don't actually apply any colour at all, which can certainly work for uh, certain styles of painting. But personally, I like to at least uh, 
attempt to paint them so that's our white scar painted if you do go over the lines um, which I think I just about haven't done here you can neaten it up with a bit of the surrounding colour but uh, for now let that dry and then we um, do the next bit and that next bit is the coloured part of the eye um, also known as the iris um, so again you want to use a very fine brush for this and for this I'm using XV88 so a bit of a kind of uh, so fairly light hazel eyes, uh, but you can use any colour that you might want as an eye colour. Um, and with this, you want to just apply it in the middle. So you want to leave kind of some of the white showing to the left and to the right of it, but you don't want to leave any up or down. So just doing it like that. I have to turn her upside down to do the other one. So I'm coming at a good angle. No, that's not worth doing this on camera. It's going to be <laughs> so. I've done the one eye. You can see that's um, how that's turned out. Get to focus. There we go. Yeah. So I'm going to do the other one like that as well. And there we have some relatively easy to do eyes. Nothing too complicated. Just uh, the white and the iris. Um, trying to get a pupil in on a 28 mil scale model's eyes are uh, just just going to be crazy trying to do that. Um, and it is worth at this stage taking a little bit of time just to make sure that you, you get the eyes pretty even. You don't want the model looking too cross-eyed. Um, now, I just want to do the, the mouth. Um, and again, because this is a very small model, we're just going to go very simple. Um, if she had a mouth shut, I wouldn't really do anything with it. I would just uh, highlight it along with the skin. Because she's got a mouth open, I am just going to put a bit of this colour here, Charivore Crimson, which is uh, an ink wash just inside her mouth just to sort of show that it's uh, you know um, sort of a flesh sort of a, you know like an inside fleshy sort of area just dab that in there uh, doesn't show great on this camera to be honest but you can kind of see that's a little bit red and as that will dry particularly when the model's at the angle it's going to be seen which is more like this just give quite a, a subtle appearance next stage while that is drying, it's just to get some of the next colour I'm going to do, which is going to be the colour for her hair. Um, and I think for this I'm going to make her a redhead. Um, so I'm going to go with corn red, yeah, just to get in some of that on my palette now. And then just applying this over all of her hair, being careful not to get it on the skin you've already done. Once that's dry, just going to give it an ink wash of Agrax Earthshade. And once again, just being careful not to get this onto any of the skin. As with all washes, that takes quite a while to dry, but it is worth uh, letting it get completely dry before you move on to the next step. I'm going back to Corn Red, but this time we're going to dry brush it on. And this can be quite a heavy dry brush, um, trying to get all the, the raised areas of the hair um, to kind of build up the uh, the hair like effect I guess um, and you can do various different uh, hair, hair colours with this you know maybe you're a dark held arm you like to dye the hair blue or uh, you know you could do quite a natural brown or colour or uh, mix in some very light browns with yellows and whites to get a blonde um, but yeah there we go that's the first dry brush done in corn red then we're going to finish off the hair with a second highlight of Evil Sun Scarlet. So this is a lighter colour and we're going to apply this uh, with a lighter dry brush. So you want to remove almost all the paint and just catch the most raised edges as you brush that across. Uh, shows up pretty nicely on the back here. Just to, uh, to give that a nice... Uh, Nice finish. I um, might actually need just a tad more paint on there. There we go, that's looking good. So just, uh, yeah, nice uh, finished highlight on the hair there. With the hair and everything on the face done, and I want to do some of the parts of the model that are going to be black before we uh, do the overall bodysuit that she's wearing. So uh, this one shoulder pad here, that's going to be black. And then we've also got some cabling here. Now these I'm just base coating in Abaddon Black. Um, 
just uh, to get them uh, nice and dark ready for the next layer and as you can see here she's got a glove on one side so I'm going to do that in black as well just uh, get the underside as well there we go um, and uh, yep yeah, that is basically that stage there while the black parts are drying I've just turned the model around and got some XV88 and I'm going to use this to just base coat the leather pouches that are on her backside here um, being careful not to get the, uh, the metal parts there because she's got like a, a grenade and some sort of light flare but she's also got these uh, these pouches which I'm going to do as a kind of a leather colour so just basing those in XV88 for now then we're going to go back to the black parts and for this I'm uh, just going to give them a quick highlight with Dawnstone um, and you just want to be uh, quite selective about what you highlight here you don't want it to uh, crowd out the black too much so you just want to do the raised tips of these spikes here um, the edge of this um, shoulder pad and uh, on the other parts of the model um, like the hand here you just want to do the raised parts of the fingers um, using quite a, a fine point on the brush here just to to do the uh, quick raised highlight on, uh, edge highlight on this and the edge of the glove here just where it meets the skin just to uh, give that a little bit of definition and the bit where it meets the hand just a few of the raised surfaces and on this control panel here just as a very quick highlight because the black's not really going to be the focus of the model here you know you're mainly going to be looking at the vehicle itself and then on the rider it's going to be the face the skin and the hair that are going to be the main things you notice we're getting very close to finishing off the gunner now and at this stage i'm bringing the vehicle back into uh, the mix as well because we're going to do a few stages here that apply to both the gunner and the driver um, the driver obviously has a lot less uh, different details on him because he's uh, very much tucked away in the cockpit there so we're going back to Cantor Blue the original colour we base coated everything in and going to work on the the bodysuit here now the um, pilot or the gunner in particular has two very distinct types of material that her, uh, her clothes are made out of uh, just trying to get a bit more light in here there we go so on the legs here you've got this uh, what looks like sort of a fabric or a leather type thing and we are going to keep this all in blue but with this you kind of have to think a little bit more about where your recesses are they're a bit more a bit more gradual um, i'm going to layer this up in uh, um, in cantor blue just leaving the the deep recesses um, in the the shaded color here but then on other parts of the model we've got these much harder lines where it's um where it's clearly armour so you've got to be much more uh, I guess precise with these there's no uh, sort of in between of where the light will and won't be it's the raised segments of the armour get um, the cantor blue whereas the recesses need to be left dark they just have that much sharper edge to them um, I'm going to go around the whole model and uh, highlight all the blue or layer all the blue in this way and then when that's done we'll uh, also do the pilot then to get a nice quick um, sort of shaded effect on these pouches we're just going to give them a quick wash in Agrax Earthshade so just applying enough of that to give it sort of enough uh, to flow over the surface and into the recesses you see here that it darkens down the whole area while making the uh, the recess parts particularly dark and like any ink wash you need to give this a good amount of time to dry and once that's completely dry I'm just going to finish it off with a quick highlight of XV88 um, so this is the original colour that we base coated these parts in and just hitting the most prominent reset uh, most prominent raised areas so along the bottom here along the uh, sort of the flap and across the top and you can see that uh, the shade has darkened it down so that 
what was originally the base colour now works as the highlight. This is just a very simple way I like to use to get these sort of minor details like these uh, pouches that you get on a lot of different models um, and you know they're not the main focus of the model but just paying a little bit of attention to them helps to uh, to make them look uh, or make the whole model just look a little bit better like you've taken your time on on all of it here we go so now that we've brought all of the um, areas that are going to be blue apart from the deepest recesses up to the base colour we're now going to highlight them now you could spend ages doing um, a multi-layered highlight like we did on the hull of the vehicle but for these uh, smaller less focal points of the model it can be worth just doing something a little bit quicker so I'm just going straight to the highlight techless blue and just applying this to the most raised areas so edges of the armour plates are an obvious good place to start um, it's going to just capture all the raised parts to give them a highlight. On the um, less um, sharp edges, you still want to just look for the most sort of prominent parts, like a kneecap here, um, the tips of the toes, the edges of some of the folds in the fabric of her shoes. I don't know if these really are shoes, they're more just kind of like an extension of her, her leggings, I guess. Um, and you're just looking to uh, to catch all of these these raised parts on the model, and you want to apply this to the gunner of the vehicle as well, doing the same process. Um, you just need to uh, be careful not to uh, spoil all the work you've already done in here. So, uh, like any edge highlight, it's going to take a little while to do, require a little bit of patience, but it should give a nice finished result. And with that highlight now applied, um, the crew are almost finished. There's just one last thing I need to do, and that's some of these uh, metallic parts. So she's got like a, a spar of metal poking through her, um, her hairpiece there. And then she's also got these little uh, spikes you can just see on the lower leg there. Um, and I'm going to do these really simply. Just going to start off with a base coat of lead belcher. Just applying this in, in one even coat over the whole of the, the metal parts, being careful not to spoil any of the work you've already done. And then to finish these bits off, just a quick highlight with this colour here, Runefang Steel. So just picking out the most raised areas on there and just the, the tip of each of these um, little spikes on there, just to uh, make them pop a little bit more. So with that, the crew of the vehicle are now finished and you're ready to glue the gunner in place. Um, you can see I've also highlighted the pilot in the same way. So one last thing to do, which is just to do the canopy. Now I've kept this separate because I want to keep it clear. Now you can, in theory, if you want to save a little bit of time, just paint the canopy black and ignore the pilot uh, just for a sort of a quicker way. But I want to show you how to uh, Get the canopy looking really nice and uh, yeah obviously I've worked on the pilot we want to be able to see what's in there so I've mounted the canopy which is completely unpainted unglued onto this old paint pot this is blue tack and if you look at the canopy you see that the it's got these ridges that obviously where the um, the aren't glass that are part of the armor of the vehicle and they're slightly raised and they're on the outside whereas it's also got this bit which is like a targeted lens it's actually on the inside so I'm going to paint them from the respective sides. So starting with the bit that's on the outside, so you want the canopy the right way up for this. I'm going to go in with Cantor Blue again and with a nice uh, nice point on my brush because you really don't want to uh, uh, mess this up because it's a bit of a pain. Because you can't really paint over the bits you're intending to leave clear. just want to start base coating that, being very careful not to... Uh, get any of the bits that should be left clear. And when applying that layer it's important to keep the paint suitably thin so that you've got good control over it um, and that with the fact you're painting without a true undercoat means that you're going to have to use two, two thin layers to get a nice even coat. And once you've done that I'm going to give this a quick highlight with Techless Blue 
Um, so once again, you want to be very careful about applying this to only the places you want it. You want to really make sure you don't get it onto any of the um, uh, exposed um, clear glass or what's going to be appears like glass because it's plastic. Um, so this is uh, one to take your time with again and be a bit careful. In fact, I'm actually going to do the rest of this off camera. Um, one thing to bear in mind is you don't want to do these outside edges. That, oh, I can't really see that. These outside edges because um, these are actually going to be stuck in place so they wouldn't naturally get a highlight. So that's the outside of the canopy done. Now to finish off, we just want to flip it over. And you don't need to worry about highlighting these inside bits of the canopy because they're not going to uh, be seen on the finished model. But we do want to do this little... Um, like targeting array there. So for this, I'm going to start off with Incubi Darkness, just getting some of that onto my palette now. So this is a nice uh, dark green base coat. And um, yeah, just applying that in this recessed area here that forms the targeting lens. Um, you can't really see it, the light's reflecting badly. There we go, that's a bit better see what I'm aiming for here and just keeping that inside the lines and again making sure your paint is suitably watered down so that it, it flows nicely oh that's fallen off there now but that's fine I'll uh, finish that off camera and come back and do the highlight okay and now I've flipped it back over and also mounted it on a lighter colored paint pot so you can see it a little bit better and now we're just going to go in with a again a brush with a really nice good tip on it and this colour here, Cabalite Green, to be our final highlight. So we're just going to really want to be focusing on the, the top edges here, just to give it some definition. We don't ne necessarily need to highlight all of it, just some of the, uh, the high points to give this a nice finish. And that's the finished canopy. And I think here by applying the base coat on the inside and the highlights on the outside, it gives it a nice sort of a nice effect as you might expect from sort of this uh, head up display type thing. Anyway, now that's all that's left to do is stick this bit on and stick the gunner in place. And here's the completed Venom. Um, as you can see, I've got the canopy glued into place now and um, the uh, gunner's glued on as well. And I think with the, uh, the nice layered highlight on the hull and the freehand work, it's looking pretty good. Now, you can use um, these techniques um, for most Dark Eldar vehicles. Um, and at the end, I'll put up some pictures of some of the other ones I've painted so you can, uh, can see how it looks on some of the other vehicles and the flyers. But uh, yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this video and found it interesting and informative. And uh, hopefully see you guys again soon. Bye.